In 2008, an American missionary volunteering in a shelter in the district of Duran discovered that many children presented severe disorders in their behavior as a result of proven sexual abuse. After several months and a complaint, the case was brought to court. Over time, those responsible practically disappeared, and today, many people believe that it is a crime without punishment. The boys began to run toward the train tracks. The caretakers opened the doors and told the boys to flee. The police were getting closer. The boys were afraid because they had been told they were coming to arrest them. What they did not know is that they were really coming to rescue them. Although crimes were committed, they would never be punished. This cruel story was made public by the American missionary Titus Folden. He arrived in Ecuador as a volunteer with the Mustard Seed Foundation. As a sports instructor, he volunteered in the Shalom Foundation, located at kilometer 13.5 on the road from Duran to Yaguachi. I began to notice aggressive behaviors and things that caused me to believe that there was sexual abuse going on. So I went to talk with the director, Ana Pino, and she confirmed that abuse was going on. Boys of the same age abusing each other, as well as older boys abusing the younger ones, doing terrible things. Folden didn't know that other collaborators of the foundation had already warned that inside the home, where about 20 children and teenagers were living from Monday till Friday, violence and sexual abuse were taking place. What do we do? We now know this is happening. So now what? She told me to talk with the psychologist at the time, Carlos Maldonado. So I began meeting with him weekly. And he told me how much worse the situation really was. He told me he confronted the director, threatening to call the police if she did not expel the oldest abuser from the home. The following day, the boy was gone. A formal police report was filed exposing the awful reality that these boys were living in, where the older teenage boys would force open the bedroom doors of the small boy's room, then rape them. Vision 360 contacted Anna Pino, but she refused to speak with us and asked that her lawyer, Enrique Andrade, represent her. If she really knew that these crimes were being committed and didn't do anything about it, that would mean she was crazy and should be admitted to a rehabilitation center for the mentally ill. It's a complete lie from this foreigner who has put words in her mouth stating that she knew about and accepted these crimes and supposed rapes with the Shalom Foundation. On November 20th, 2011, the complaint was presented to the prosecutor's office of Duran. Okay. 
The prosecutor, Jesus Freire Quinto, initiated a series of legal actions in a police operation which ended on December 1st of the same year. Captain Luis Coyoga Remache led the operation, and in his report, he describes in detail the rescue of the boys from the area known as the Iguana House, close to the train station in Yaguachi. The children were taken to a police medical examination where the sexual crimes expert, Dr. Armando Hama, determined that 13 out of 20 of them had been abused. Other authorities also participated, and the reports were included in the case, including Jorge Arieta Guzman, lawyer from the police department in Duran, and Rafael Fernandez, a specialist in the Witness Protection Program from Children and Family Services. In June 2012, the family court number 17 ordered the two adolescent boys to serve four years of juvenile detention. One of them escaped. The other will be released soon. Mayra is outraged when she remembers how terrible the events that happened were and that there was no punishment. Her three older boys still suffer from the consequences of the hell they lived in, in the Shalom Center. I received a call from Aldeberta Castillo telling me that this situation cannot go on anymore. I asked her what was going on, and she told me that my children were being sexually abused. Then I got really upset, just like any other mother would. Then the director, Ana Pino, came to see me and brought me to a private lawyer. And there, told me that the rape of my children was not happening at the foundation, but outside the foundation. She then made me press charges against a man who had never been around my children. Foundation Peace and Hope was in charge of the legal assistance for this case. It has a department to handle these type of crimes. It does not charge a fee and seeks justice to help redeem the victims. We're not talking about events that have happened without the knowledge of the competent authorities, which could happen anywhere in the world. In this case, the director had direct knowledge and she was the first to receive the testimonies of the victims of child sexual abuse. However, nothing was done to protect the children or report the situation to authorities. In the beginning, there were several mothers who also pressed charges, but in time, little by little, the mothers withdrew their formal charges. One day, we went to a court hearing in El Recreo, and Miss Ana Pino's lawyer told us, All you want is money. We'll give you $20,000, and you forget all about that. What did you answer? No, the dignity and the honor of my sons aren't worth $20,000. They have no price. I want justice to be done, and they have to pay for their crime. She is as guilty as the people who assaulted my children. She maintained the charges against the director, Anna Pino, by considering her an accessory of sexual crimes. The children had eventually confessed to her everything that occurred inside the shelter, and how they were not listened to and were even threatened when they talked about the abuses. Testimonies were certified by the Foundation's ex-workers as well as Dr. Cecilia Saltos Menas' official report from the Guayas Prosecutor's Office for Victims and Witnesses Department. The trial for accessory against Ana Pino was delayed. She was summoned six times by Duran's prosecutor, Dr. Fernando Yavar Martinez. In July and November 2013, January, February, April and July 2014. She was never arrested or forced to be present in court by the police. The tribunal court convened six times. One of them was suspended for internal reasons. 
So we're really only talking about five in which my client, Anna Pino, demonstrated with medical certificates stating that a woman of her age put under such great stress due to the slander from this citizen who says she's the mother of three minors does not have the health that would allow her to attend any trial hearings. She always went and declared in the prosecutor's office in Duran, but these were trial hearings. It's not that she didn't want to attend, it's just that we believe the charges against her were incorrect. When Ana Pino finally showed up for court, a new penal code had been adopted. The charge of accessory was no longer a crime. Therefore, she could no longer be prosecuted. In the end, 13 child victims of sexual abuse and another case on the list of crimes without punishment.